Welcome back. We need Ganerwala joining us now from Webhav Global. We've got lots to discuss with them post a great Q4 and also the outlook going forward. Uh, Vineet, uh, thanks for being with us. Uh, let's just kick start on Q4 in particular. How's the momentum been and uh, have you seen any tapering uh, post festive season? So all, good morning and thank you for having me here. So we continue to see the elevated level of growth in Q4 like we had in earlier quarters. So no tapering of growth anywhere. All the platforms continue to grow the way they were growing in the last nine quarters. We continue to see sustained uh, TV viewership, uh, increased web traffic. So pretty much uh, very happy with the way we are moving in Q4, which is in line with our revenue guidance as well. Okay, and um, given the strong momentum that you've now seen in the last three quarters, uh, are you poised to close the year off on a robust note? Yes, of course. Uh, so we are pretty confident of our uh, numbers which we gave. So as a guidance, we gave to end the year at a 21 to 23 percent uh, uh, retail revenue growth in constant currency terms. And we are pretty confident of meeting that revenue guidance. Okay. Um, give us a sense as well as to, you know, with what's happening internationally as well, given that the UK is still under lockdown, has there been any impact in terms of your sales or on the overall supply situation? So we are an e-retailer. So we sell through home shopping, TV shopping, uh, web, our own web platforms. We sell through marketplaces, Amazon, eBay, and we sell through social commerce. So Facebook, Instagrams and the like. So more stringent lockdowns actually we only gain more because people are at home during this entire pandemic period we saw increased web traffic increased tv viewership so the stricter the lockdown it only helps us uh, further but in the last 12 months maybe we have now seen uh, various phases of uh, economics closing down opening up again again closing down so pretty much we are able to maintain the momentum across various ups and downs of the economy, the way it is behaving. And what we believe is that the economic model which we have, our value positioning in the eyes of the customers, so the deep, deep, deep discount value positioning, it works good in all kinds of economic cycles. So we are pretty confident uh, of maintaining our uh, momentum uh, in the even when the economy opens up fully. And hence, for the, even for the medium term, what we have given is a guidance of 15 to 17% revenue growth. In case of supply, so our supply was not disrupted even in peak pandemic period in Q1 of uh, this year. So we are a regional supply uh, chain structure. Uh, so China, India, Thailand, Indonesia, but besides these four locations, we also procure from not many countries within Europe. So this regional structure works very beautifully for us. If there is any issue in one area locally, the other just rises to the occasion and pushes up the supply. So even during peak pandemic period, we were able to manage our operations and supply quite nicely. Understood. It worked really well for you. Um, and what about the response that uh, you know you've seen with Shop LC now on Amazon, eBay, Walmart in Canada? Are you planning to expand to other markets? Has it been received well? So we'll continue to expand our marketplace operations. Uh, so more and more marketplace are being added every now and then. Uh, in terms of geographical expansion, uh, we did expand to Canada about a month or two back. We are also testing a marketplace in Germany and Japan, like we also mentioned in our last investor call as well. So that's a bit of testing the market, if you may call it that way. So uh, we are seeing phenomenal growth in our marketplace revenues. Uh, uh, so we did about, say, $4 million in revenue terms through, with all these marketplaces last year. And this year, we expect to close around $14 million kind of a revenue. So phenomenal success out there and which is more heartening because there we are competing against millions of sellers. So it speaks about our product quality, our product strength, our product price positioning. We do not discount when we sell through all these marketplaces. We sell it at an equal or even a little higher price than what we sell through our own TV channels or our own web. 
So it speaks of the product quality and the entire ecosystem around it. Vineet, what you know, wanted to understand really, what is it that's helping you sustain the margins despite a model which is based on heavy discounting and whether or not you had any strategy in place uh, for staying slow down proof uh, all this while? So uh, we have a vertically integrated supply chain. So we manufacture our own fashion jewelry. We recently ventured into manufacturing our own apparels as well. And we source the other lifestyle products, be it home, beauty, uh, fashion, and accessories through manufacturers directly. So we have about 120 people team uh, operating out of China office. Similarly, there are offices in Thailand, Indonesia. India is a big location for us anyway, big uh, setup. So these, uh, so these supply chain team is working directly with manufacturers, working very closely with the product innovation team to understand the changing consumer needs and work directly with the manufacturers to turn it around and supply them to our customers. So we have a manufacturer's DNA. So we manufacture either ourselves or work with them directly, which keeps our cost pretty much under control. And we have a huge cost advantage because of this vertical integration of supply chain. This enables us not only to uh, give offer great value to the customers, but at the same time also maintain a very healthy gross margins for us. So the only strategy, the only constant is uh, any product to come and sell on our platform need to give us 60% or more of gross margins. And we have been able to maintain that last many quarters, last many years, in fact. Sure. You know, that's the other thing that I want to talk about. Uh, since your business is not very capex intensive, does it also imply that whatever money you make gets added on to your books? And also wanted to understand what really is the cash in books currently? Absolutely, you are right. So uh, the capex routine capex requirement is not much for our kind of business. Hence, the operating cash flow a large part of that flows down to the free cash flow as well. So last year, our capex was to the tune of 35 odd crores and pretty much the routine capex is not high. Hence, we see a very high flow through in the free cash flows. Cash standing in books as of December was about 380 odd crores. And because of the nature of the business, so the good operating leverage story and not capital being this being a not, not so heavy capital intensive, the return issues are increasing constantly. So what was a low single digit maybe uh, six years back, the ROC is now standing at 56%. ROE is now standing at maybe 30 odd percent as of nine months for this year. Okay, Mr. Kaneri Wala, we leave it there. Thanks so much for joining us. Thank you very much. Thank you. Good for to having. get uh, the latest there.